Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Teacher Mian here. I hope you guys are doing well. Now this past week has been really, really beautiful and I hope that you've been able to enjoy the outdoors a little bit more. You know, every time I'm outside, it reminds me of how big God is. I know that since last year, we've been stuck mostly at home and when we're inside our homes almost all the time, it can feel like our problems and our stresses are so much bigger than they really are. When we walk outdoors, we immediately realize how big the world is, don't we? I certainly do. You know, this world is not just about us and our problems. And so for me, being outdoors and seeing how big the world is and realizing that I'm not the only person on this earth, uh, it helps me to see uh, that God is doing something and God is everywhere that we look. It's like putting on my glasses in the morning when I get up so that I can see clearly. It helps to correct my view, my perspective. It's almost like a wake up call so that I can focus on what is truly important, which is to live my life for Jesus and to honor God in all that I do. You know, if I'm really honest with you, I still think quite a lot about all that happened uh, last year in 2020. It was such a life-changing year for not just us, but for the entire world that I think it will impact our lives truly forever. And one way I see God using 2020 for our good is to help correct that perspective on life that I was just talking about. Because, you know, it made everyone humble, right? Because we realized that our lives were uh, in danger with a disease that nobody could see with their eyes and it wasn't just the weak or the poor the uneducated or the unpopular that uh, were in danger it was everyone even the richest the smartest the strongest and the most famous people nobody uh, was safe from this disease and still no one is and it made me realize that I have to live my life for God now not tomorrow not later but now Today is what counts, and I never know how much time I have left here on earth, and either do you, and I want to make my life count for God's kingdom today. So no more wasting time on wrong priorities or dreams that really don't matter. So as we close out this first month of 2021 in January, I want you to think about how you can live your life for God today. Before you think about tomorrow or next week, think about today. How will you make God your priority today? It's not enough just to sit through worship on Sunday mornings like today. We want to make every single day a day of worship unto the Lord. And we can do this in so many ways. You can get creative and fun with it. We can worship God when we're alone or when we're together, whether we are doing our homework or cooking with our families or doing sports outside or crafts inside. It doesn't just have to be when we're reading our Bibles, when we're praying, or singing worship songs. And so as we worship Him together in this moment, let's start by praying and asking God to lead us and open up our hearts to Him today. So go ahead and bow your heads with me. Father, we do love you. And so many times, truly every single day we fail, we make mistakes, we sin against you and others. And so, in the end, we're all children before you. We're so weak, we're so needy for you. And the amazing thing is that you don't shame us for that. You don't make us feel bad. But Lord, you call us to yourself and you provide the way to you through Jesus and through his death on the cross, the cleansing of our sins through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so we cling to that truth. We cling to the gospel and the good news. And Lord, we rejoice in the life that you have given to us, the second chance, God, that only you can give us. And so, Lord, as we look at the fragility of our lives, how we don't know anything that's truly going to happen because you're in control, Lord, we put our trust in you and we ask that you would make every single day a day of worship unto you. Help us, God, in little ways and big ways to make you uh, the center of our life. So that, Lord, at the end of our life, when we are standing before you, we would hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And Lord, that you would welcome us into your kingdom with joy. So Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Be with us now as we worship you. Uh, open up our hearts, God, to your word, to your spirit, that you would transform us, renew our minds, and mold our hearts to be like yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
remains There's no battle we're fighting in vain It is real, it is real It is more than what we feel It is true, it is true That we are free And we will dance Dance the test of the foe
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, guys, welcome back. Well, why don't we just dive right in? As we listen to today's Bible story here in a little bit, keep your mind on our big picture question for this unit, which is, what is the church? What is the church? And the answer is that the church is all Christians everywhere who gather together in their communities to worship and serve God. Now this question helps us remember that the stories of the Bible all fit together to tell one greater story of how God rescues sinners through His Son, whose name is Jesus, the only name that can save. The church, you guys, is God's instrument, chosen instrument, for bringing the message of salvation to sinners everywhere around the world. For the last couple of weeks, we have been hearing stories in the Bible about the early church, when the church first started after Jesus returned and ascended to heaven. And the early church grew as Jesus' followers, empowered by the Holy Spirit, shared the gospel with others. Now, can anyone tell me what the word gospel means? Very good, very good. The gospel means good news. And today we are going to hear a Bible story from the book of Romans so that we can better understand what exactly this good news is and how this message changes everything. So go ahead and turn your Bibles to the book of Romans in the New Testament. And we're going to hang out in chapters 5 and 6. So I want you guys to find Romans chapter 5. And go ahead and put your finger there or a bookmark. And let's check out our Bible story for today. Jesus' followers in the early church wanted everyone to hear the good news about Jesus. God had kept his promise to send a savior. He sent his own son, Jesus, to earth to rescue sinners. Jesus lived the perfect life we cannot live and died the death we deserve to die. On the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. This good news, the gospel, changes everything. People who love Jesus tell others about him. That's what Paul did. Paul wrote a letter to believers in Rome to tell them that Jesus was the Savior they had been waiting for. Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone sins and needs to be rescued. God saves people who believe the good news about Jesus. Because of their faith, God forgives their sins and gives them eternal life. Paul wrote, that God showed his love for us by sending his son to die for us. We were sinners, enemies of God, but Jesus died and rose again to make us right with God. Jesus is God's good gift to us. Let's rejoice. Paul reminded the people about the first man, Adam. When Adam sinned, death came into the world. Everyone sinned, so death spread to all people. God sent Jesus into the world to bring us a gift that is greater than Adam's sin. Adam brought death, but Jesus brings life. Adam disobeyed God, but Jesus obeyed him perfectly. Does that mean we can keep on sinning because we are forgiven? Paul said no. no. Jesus sets us free from sin so we can live in a new way that honors him. Because God created everything, He is in charge of everything. Everyone sins or disobeys God. Our sin separates us from God. 
The good news of the gospel is that God sent his son Jesus to take the punishment we deserve. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved. All right, welcome back. Well, if you wanted to share the good news of the Bible in one sentence, you could say this. God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. And this is the good news that Jesus' followers in the early church shared with everyone that they could. Paul dedicated his life, his entire life, after meeting Jesus, to sharing the gospel. And Jesus calls all believers like you and me to share the good news so that people from all over the world might hear it and believe and have eternal life. And so I have a question for you. How do you feel when you think, just think about telling other people about Jesus? How does that make you feel? Are you excited or maybe a little nervous? I think when I think about it, I feel a little bit of both. It's not always easy, but when you think about Paul, why was Paul so eager, so just kind of excited and ready, just wanting so badly to share the good news? Now, there's a verse in the first chapter of Romans that answers this question, and I want to read it to you. It comes from Romans chapter 1, verse 16. You don't have to turn there, but make sure you listen to this. So in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul writes, For I am not ashamed or embarrassed right, of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. And so when we read this, we see that Paul, he was not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. There is nothing else and no one else that can save us and give us eternal life. Now, imagine that you are standing at the side of a pool holding a life jacket and you see someone in the pool struggling to keep his head above water. Now, what would you do? What would any good person do? You would throw that person who's struggling in the water, that drowning person, the life jacket that is in your hands. You have the thing with you that will save that person. Now, I've told most of you guys my own story of drowning when I think I was about five or six years old. I was in my neighbor's pool playing with uh, my neighbor's grandkids and I had my back towards the water, towards the pool, and I was pushed into the shallow end, not even the deep end, but the shallow end, which is maybe about three and a half feet of water uh, by the grandson. And I just fell and I sank straight to the bottom of the pool because I was so little. And I started to drown uh, at the bottom of that pool until someone rushed in and they pulled me out. Now, when I think about that story, every single time I realized that I could have died in just a few feet of water. None of you guys would ever uh, be nervous or scared about standing in three feet of water because you're taller, right? But you guys, I could have died in that water if no one had seen what had happened or had come to help me. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that I could have done to save myself. Isn't that a frightening thought? And maybe you guys have been in a similar situation, maybe not in the water, but maybe somewhere else, where if nobody else had seen your situation, you could have been seriously hurt or even lost your life. Now imagine if a bridge had collapsed and you saw people driving towards it, unaware of the danger. What would you do? Just like the person who had the life jacket uh, watching somebody drown in water, you would, you would run to help them. You would run and wave your arms and yell at them to stop and to turn their car around, wouldn't you? Now, that is the same type of urgency, this feeling of, I, I got to do this now, that we should have when we're telling other people about Jesus. Because apart from Jesus, we are dead. Not half dead, but dead, 100% dead in our sin. And we'll spend eternity, eternity separated from God. Now, that is extremely bad news. That's about the worst news that you could ever have. But you guys, every single day, we are closer and closer 
to the end of our lives here on earth. And no matter how young you are, how healthy and alive you feel today, we never know what's going to happen in the next moment because we are not in ultimate control over our lives. Only God is. And only God knows the number of our days here on earth. And this is why I'm so thankful that the Bible tells us that God is good, that He's holy and righteous, that He is loving, faithful, compassionate, slow to anger, that He is forgiving, that He is merciful, and so much more of all that is right and good. I don't want to trust or even think about knowing or worshiping a God that is unholy or evil. But I do want to trust and know and love the God of the Bible. And that is who we worship. We don't just worship any God, lowercase g God. We worship the one true and living God. And so when we look at the letter that Paul wrote to the Romans, he writes and he says that there is good news for sinners, right? Everyone is a sinner. And so I want you guys to take a look now at Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead and get your finger on verse 8 in chapter 5. And let's see what it says. It says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And that one verse alone in the Bible it shows us that God loves us and He sent His Son. That was His plan. Jesus died and He rose again to make us right with God, to restore that broken relationship that we had with God. And He frees us from sin so that we can live for Him. And so let's talk about what our Christ connection is for today. And it's this. Because God created everything, He is in charge of everything. Everyone sins or disobeys God. And our sin separates us from Him. And the good news of the Gospel is that God sent His Son, Jesus, to take the punishment that we deserve. So everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved. You see, when we believe the good news about Jesus, we become a part of His family, the Church. We are part of the body of Christ. And just as a reminder, what is a Church? The church is all Christians everywhere who gather together in their communities to worship and serve God. And so while the bad news is that all sinners deserve death, the good news is that God loves us and that God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. And I think that is a great place to end for today. And that's a great place for us to stop and to think about what God did for us through sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to live on this earth, to live a perfect life, to die on the cross, and to take the punishment that you and I deserve for our sins upon Himself so that we can have eternal life. And so let's take a moment and let's offer our worship to the Lord by praying and thanking Him. Let's go and bow our heads. Father God, I pray that each and every day you would help us to realize how worthy you are of our worship. As we realize more and more how sinful we are, how weak we are, how out of control we are of our lives. God, we need you so much more. And Lord, as our students are growing every single day, they're learning so much. They're becoming these amazing and wonderful young men and women of you. I pray that the defining character and feature of their life is godliness, that they are becoming more and more like Jesus in every single way possible. More than them becoming the smartest or the most intelligent, the most respected, the most athletic, the most popular, the most anything, Lord, without you it means nothing. And so I pray that our students will grow in godliness. Lord, this is only possible through uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. And so, Lord, that's what I pray for today as we worship, as we set our eyes uh, once again on Jesus. And I pray that you would align our hearts and our minds 
to set you at the center of our life that we realize that the things that the world tells us to chase after to think about to just dream about lord it's not worth it if it has nothing to do with you so god teach us what is important teach us and show us what we ought to live our lives for just christ alone so thank you for this time of worship that we have i know it's been such a long time lord i i had hoped that we would start this year together but lord you are still faithful you're still with us and we can still worship you and so we praise you for that thank you again god for the life that you give us in jesus and jesus alone help us to worship you and help us to live our lives now for you in jesus name we pray amen be gone and let everyone stay healthy at home and let us meet our friends again and let us strive to become more like you help us grow to become loving and kind in Jesus name we pray amen we though many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 